Hello, this is Mark Cashman, Senior Product Manager at Microsoft, here to share some information about Microsoft Lists. I focus on SharePoint and Microsoft Lists and sort of the glue that binds all of that in Microsoft Teams. Uh, and today's video, I just wanted to highlight some questions that I've been getting and some uh, just ways that you can leverage Microsoft Lists from a views perspective. So I want to show you a couple of lists and a couple of ways that you can navigate the information with views. So I'm here on Microsoft Lists. I will show you specifically how I'm using Microsoft Lists on the desktop at the end. That's a little Microsoft Edge trick if you know progressive web apps. Um, Lists works great as a progressive web app, but I'm going to save that as a bonus at the end. I'm going to first dive into my list here, the SharePoint Fest workshops. I recently worked with the SharePoint Fest team to do a workshop specifically on Microsoft Lists. So the concept here was to use List to show all of the different workshops that they were offering. You can see that the ones in the past are green, and the ones that are upcoming in uh, March and April are in yellow. But really, to start off this demo, what you're looking at is grid view. Grid view is essentially rows and columns, a way to represent your data. You can add your own custom columns. You can, of course, add tons of rows, and each row essentially is an item. And if you're in grid view, you can always go and do some bulk edit and bulk adjustments by doing the edit in grid view. You can also set this as your default view if you want, but it's a nice easy way to navigate. You can navigate even just using tab gestures and, and things on the keyboard. Um, but grid is a really flexible way to showcase the way that people are, are used to seeing information in rows and columns. So grid view has both that sort of edit one, you can click into one item, you can see the form. This one's been a little bit customized, but essentially this is a native list form. And it's really easy to see the data per uh, the single row. But if you go into Edit in Grid View, Grid View gives you that capability to bulk edit items. Uh, and that's pretty easy to do, easy to learn, and like I would mentioned, easy to navigate with the keyboard. But that's Grid View. So chalk that up is the Demo 1 Grid View. It's very default and out of the box. And it usually, if you go into the List Options drop-down, it's essentially listed as a list by default, and we are here on All Items. Now, another way to view and use this view is uh, by going into the Compact List, which for any set of data at least gives you the same row height, so that if you have some things like this description that for some of them gets kind of long, you'll see that it will optimize. So now every row has the same height, and I can see more information on the page. Just a nice way to use the grid as you get it out of the box. So grid view gives you the ability to do a lot, and it's a pretty standard view. The other default view that we have that works great when you have an image, or you just want to look at it a little bit differently in what we call a card layout, you can click on gallery view. And this is by default what you get. If you click on gallery view, it's kind of pre-configured for you. Um, and I've adjusted this a little bit, so I'll show, I'll show you that one next. But again, some of that color coding that I built into this list, those upcoming uh, dates as I scroll through here, you'll see that they're in yellow. And any of these items obviously has an image. Who are the trainers, the presenters, so you can see them. And I'll click into the one that I have upcoming uh, at the end of March, which is all about um, using content in the context of Microsoft Teams, which in this case includes lists. Um, so let me show you a little bit more about gallery view. Obviously, it has a distinct card layout. And to show you, within the gallery view, you can go in and format this current view, which will take you to launching the card designer. Uh, and you can see I'm already using the card designer. And if I go in to edit the card, you'll start to see the things that you can do pretty quickly. And this is pretty real time. So if I don't want to show a preview of the person's profile image in this case, I can uncheck that, and it minimizes it. So now I don't see the image, which may or may not be a good thing. But it also, you can immediately see, I will sh see more content. And in fact, I can see all of the virtual workshops when I minimize the profile image. But I can turn on that preview as well. I can add uh, additional things. So these are all workshops. One decision that I already made is I don't necessarily need to see what session type it is. But if I do, if I have multiple session types, I would want to maybe see that on the card. So, But I'll go back to unchecking that. The last thing is, if I don't know this data very well, or I assume people that will review this data, 
might not know that this is the title, these are the presenters, and that's the date. Pretty straightforward here. But you can also add what the column names are. So now you can see title, presenter, and date. But I think with this data set, this information, it's pretty straightforward. So I'll minimize it back down to pretty much how I had it. And anytime you exit out of the card designer, make sure you click Save. And now, when you go to Gallery View, or I'll switch back to the lists, switch back to Gallery View, if I had changed the card layout, I would see that represented here. So I can program the Gallery View, but know that by default, Gallery View, uh, and by use of the card designer, is pretty much uh, default. Um, the next thing is really one of the more common questions I get, and I'll, I'll go back to List View just to kind of do the switch over, is I actually want to use Calendar View, but if you notice, it's not a default view that we make out of the box, but it is going to be triggered, and I can choose what date it works off of. So to use Calendar View, I have to create a new view, and I'll give it a name. In this case, you can see I've already done this demo, but I'll, I'll do it again. I can type in Calendar View, and always fun to use emojis, to use the calendar emoji. Uh, let's get the right one. I think it's that one. And that's going to be our name of our view that other people see. And you can see I can save it as a list, or I can choose now either as a calendar or a new gallery view. So in this case, I want to show you how to create a calendar view. And then it's going to ask me, what date do I want to go off of? And you look up here, it's essentially what column, if there's only a single column with date information, then that might be pretty straightforward. But when I open this, you can see that we also give you two other default dates to go off of the date that the item was created or the date that the item was last modified. That might be good for something like the issue tracker. When was this last modified? That's what I want to see on the calendar. But for this, I really want to see from a calendar view when it, are these workshops being delivered. So we go off of the date column. That shows it here. I want to make this a public view. And the last thing that I can do is on what shows on the calendar, I can choose from any of these columns what I want to appear. And I think it's most helpful to have the title of the session, so we'll just leave that by default. But I could have it show the presenter, I could have it show any column of data as what actually gets shown on the calendar. So when I click Create, it's going to create a calendar view. And pretty immediately you will see that it looks like a calendar. And if I show you, you know, all the things that are in March, they have a few that they've listed coming in April. And anytime now I can navigate the data, I can see what's coming up again to show a different one. I can click into if I want to learn more about the beginner's guide to Power BI, I just double click it. And from calendar view, I can access that row of information, that line, that list item. I can see all the details. And again, it just uses the out of box list form that I've lightly configured with a header and a footer. Um, so pretty straightforward. That is now a calendar view that I have. And you can see when you create a new view that it then becomes a new view within the View Options menu dropdown. So I can switch over and I can see um, that I not only have this calendar view, but if I go back to All Items, now I can see there's the list, Compact List, Gallery, and our new calendar view. So the very last thing that I want to show you from a view perspective is this is great, but what if I want to create a custom view? And I'll show you one example, and you can, of course, do this to your heart's content in a lot of different ways. But I want to create a view based on, um, uh, sorry, a different list that I'm going to show you this. I'm going to go into the assets list. And I'm going to basically configure the list visually and then save it. So I want to do a group by status. One status that I don't care too much about to represent in this new view are these retired uh, items. So I'm going to go and then additionally filter everything but retired. And you'll see when I leave that out, now I've got a couple of categories. But if you notice, I don't have the status or the category now of retired. <clears throat> and then I want to make sure that I reorder this by oldest uh, to uh, new. Uh, so I'm going to go in the purchase date and do that from basically older to new. So it'll maintain the group, maintains the filtering, and now it orders it so that you can see uh, the date is ordered per each group. And that's pretty much what I wanted to do. So once I've configured the view 
and I've got it looking how I want it to look, and this is something that I want to come back to or share with others, I'll go in and I will save this. And I'm just going to call this grouped by, just to give it a, a default. I'm going to make this public and click Save. And this now, again, in the drop-down menu for View Options, there's everything that we've talked about. And now we see it within Grouped By. If I go back to All Items, I can even see that that's now a new custom view that I've created, and I made it public. You can also make things private. All that means is only you will see them. But if it's something that you want people to use, or you want to easily share that view with other people, you can do that. Uh, so the last thing that I want to show you is what does this all look like and what, and how am I doing it as a progressive web app? It's an easy answer. It's not even something that I can claim that's part of the list product. But I'm going to switch over and now I'm on the same list home that I started on uh, as an app, but this time I'm just showing you from Edge. Here I am on my lists home. And in Edge, and you can do this in Chrome as well, go to Apps. I've already created the Microsoft List as an installed progressive web app, but if I hadn't, I can choose to create it as one. And you can see I've done that for Outlook, Twitter, Google Contacts, Pocket Cast. You can do it for a lot of, if it's a really nice web experience, it'll make a really great progressive web app. Um, but once you do that and install it as a progressive web app, what you can notice down here is now I have it as something that I can pin to my taskbar. And I'll go and I'll actually close this and show you launching it from uh, from fresh install. Here is the Lists PWA app pinned to my taskbar. When I click to launch it, it takes me right to the Lists homepage, and it's a really easy way to get to your information. So give it a try. Hopefully leveraging Lists uh, is something that you're doing more and more of, um, but also leverage views. Make the list work for you. Create a number of views, maybe for different people that you work with, for different data sets, subsets of the data, however you want to think about um, representing your data, add views as a way that makes it really nice and easy to make it look and feel exactly how you want. So hopefully that was a quick look at creating and using views in Microsoft Lists.